Then, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. Can't buy me love. Oh. Ow. Everybody tells me so. Can't buy me love. Mm, mm, mm. Can't. The Beatles said it like this Can't buy me love. Everybody tells me so. Can't buy me love. No, 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 no. Baby, don't need no diamond ring. And I'll be satisfied. Tell me that you want the kind of thing that money just can't buy. I don't care too much for money. Because money can't buy me love. I better stop right now. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Uh, what I wanted to discuss today, I thought I was going to have somebody to discuss it with me, but that didn't turn out right. Timing is everything, and there was a uh, conflicting schedule, so we weren't able to do that. So I'm going to go on and try to wing it myself because that is what we plan to do. And hopefully um, they can join me on the next uh, time we talk about this. And because it's very important. And being someone that has a lot at stake in this and someone who teaches this for a living, I think i um, it would be beneficial to the family that we just touch on this subject just a little bit. Um, there's been a phrase that's been going around, and a lot of people don't understand what the hell it is. And it's called, you know, emotional reasoners. Okay. These are people who, you know, if it don't make sense to them emotionally, then it must be wrong. And... I'm not trying to be funny, but it's one of the most difficult, difficulty, difficult things dealing with somebody who is an emotional reasoner because their emotions um, come before whatever the logic is. So I was going to see, um, again, if we can talk about this as a family, because, you know, we don't like to talk about nothing but. A lot of times stuff that don't make us think about stuff like this. We like to talk about that. But if we're going to get healthy going into this age where they just trying to unleash every damn thing on us, then again, it got to start with our mentos. Our mentos have to be, you know, up to par. I mean, we're going to be perfect, but we got to deal with some of these mentos. And it's got to start in our own families. Because like Michael Jackson said, if you start with the man in the mirror, and everybody start and do right by their own family, their self and their family. Your self, your family. What happens, that's just an extension of the community. And then what happens is you can have some cohesiveness and you can have some love and understanding back like it, like it used to be back in the day to some degree. Um, and we can grain some of this madness in. But there's a guy that I um I like uh, his uh, uh, commentary, and he runs a website called A Voice for A Voice for Men. Um, but him and uh, a shrink for men, Doctor Tower Paul Matier and Doctor Paul Elam, are explaining what an emotional reasoner is. And since I didn't have my personal <laughs> sound bite to sound off of. I think they do a pretty good job of explaining what emotional reasoning is. And I think they do a pretty good job of explaining the behavior. So at this time, with no further ado, I'm going to allow them to go and explain it to the family.
And with that, I suppose we can go on to the final uh, of uh, the four, uh, the, what we call the, the fearsome foursome. What's the final of the fearsome foursome, Dr. T? Emotional reasoning. Emotional reasoning. Well, your dog doesn't look particularly emotional right now. It's actually a very cute dog. Um, emotional reasoning. Oh, my God. Uh, the most frustrating thing in the world to deal with. Uh, won't you explain what emotional reasoning really is? It is the bane of my existence. Yep. I can, I can explain more. Um, <laughs> I believe the world is, is divided between, between introverts and extroverts and emotional reasoners and critical thinkers. Emotional reasoning, uh, well, there's emotional intelligence, and having emotional intelligence is a very good thing, but not when you allow it to make critical decisions in your life. Um, emotional reasoners will believe what feels good over what is true, especially if what is true does not feel good, makes them feel bad about themselves. Uh, they, they force fit facts to fit their feelings and oftentimes especially if you're a critical reasoner the more evidence you present the more logical you are the more emotionally out of control the emotional reasoner will become kind of like little kids going la 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 i can't hear you i can't hear you stomping their feet and then you know Tantrums occur. And I think, it's, again, I'll get probably shot at for this. Uh, I don't care. Uh, there is, I bet you, a lot of the more minor, but I mean, who's to say what's minor when it comes to domestic violence, mm -hmm. that a lot of the domestic violence that happens is people that are just up to here with emotional reasoning and snap one day yep. in the course, not to defend what they're doing yep. at, at all, but it is what happens. You get somebody that, like an emotional reasoner, if you're trying to solve a problem with an emotional reasoner, first of all, don't do that. Uh, emotional <laughs> reasoners do not solve problems. They create problems. They make problems have puppies, uh, but they don't solve problems. What they do is that they run into a wall of your logic where they cannot reconcile the fantasy they created in their head, they will simply shape shift or move over to another place and go at you from another direction without recognizing that their argument has just been discounted logically and that they're, they're, they are in fact acting irrationally. And they will move around from place to place to place, but you will never hit. It's like trying to nail jello to a tree. It's not going to happen. You'll never get them. <laughs> At a, that carnival game, whack-a-mole. Yes, exactly. And that's what emotional reasoners do. So they essentially, in relationships, they rob any possibility. Uh, see, here's part of the deal in relationships, is that a lot of times intimacy is built on conflict. That if there's conflict and you eventually work through a problem and you learn to hear each other, you build intimacy in a relationship. Same thing happens in friendships, and it can happen at work with other people that you can have conflict and you eventually both come around to a more reasonable position and you try to negotiate each other with each other for solutions. You get closer to people that way. Emotional reasoners never get close to people. They can't. It's they're totally incapable of it because they don't know how to connect with somebody enough to respect that there's two sides to the story, uh, that there is probably some compromise needed on both ends in order to solve problems. And, but what they do is they just go into the unreasonable mode, which is their emotions, and I feel like you were attacking me. doesn't matter whether you were really attacking. I feel like you were attacking me. I feel like you said this. Well, I didn't say that, but I felt like you did. And so, like, therefore you did. It's crazy, I know, but this happens to people every day all across the world and there's millions of people out there right now sitting 
in homes with relationships with emotional reasoners that will, for the rest of their lives, try to make sense to somebody who doesn't care anything about making sense whatsoever. The only right. thing they care about is winning. Right. Whoa. Thank you, Dr. T and uh, Paul Elam. Whoa. Woo. How many of us have that as a communication skill? Where all of our reasoning is, is emotional. If it doesn't make sense to us emotional, emotionally, then it's not uh, happening. And for me, I'm more of an intellectual so or logical person. I like to see myself as and I know myself to be. So when these people chip away at your thought process and they chip away at you even being logical enough to try to even explain, you know, I didn't do that. Like a man just said, I didn't do that. Yeah, well, I feel you did, but, but I didn't do that. Well, I feel you did. That's why a lot of people are sitting in jail right now because they have a partner. I'm talking about in terms of domestic uh, issues. They have a partner or a husband or a wife who actually communicates this way. And they don't see that that is totally insane. You want to talk about dysfunction? Talk about being an emotional reasoner. Because that is the number one, the number one, in my opinion, reason that people get uh, so frustrated in relationships that it becomes physical. I'm not, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying that that's right. Um, and most women are emotional reasoners. We hate to admit it. We don't want to say we are. We don't want to say none of that. Especially those that, you know, there's a lot of masculine energy going around inside my head. I'm sure y'all know this. But more, and I've raised with so many brothers. But when I look at some of these domestic violence cases and the way that the women behave, I'd be like, oh my God, because dudes don't get, they, when you've been, when you, when you've seen a healthy man in some, some degree now, now don't get me wrong. I want to make sure I'm clear with this because they're really, what did Krishna Murti say? I love that, um, uh, um, that phrase that Krishna Murti said that I saw from that book, um, there is. How do he say it? He said there there is no healthy way to integrate into such a sick society. Okay, so I realize that. I realize that there's no healthy way to integrate into a sick society. But with that being said, that's why you have to chip away in your own personal madness. You have to chip away. And what you see that doesn't make any sense. That is some learned behavior. That is some crazy stuff that we got to check our emotion. Right now, we need all hands on deck. This is a battle for our emotion. A battle for our mind. With chemical warfare, psychological warfare, and everything in between. And if we can't get our emotions together. We can't even get our emotions together where we out here quick to shoot somebody, quick to um, just do harm to your sister or your brother that look just like you and don't have no more than you got because you've been taught to hate and anything that looks like you. It's like an abused kid. See everything from the dark side. We have to start dealing with some of our emotional trauma in order for us to move to the next level as black people, we have to. And we have to, especially as black people. Especially. I don't worry about no other uh, dynamic. I worry about black people because I live amongst black people. My whole focus is to try to let, let us elevate ourselves. Because we got to live around each other. 
They don't want us living around them. But when we out here acting like heathens and animals and uh, people that can't get our emotions under control, men out here emotionally weak and being just as an emotional reasoner as a woman. Uh, Cause that's why they pick up the day. See, the emotions then got too out of control, too out of control. They don't know how to reel it back. So, like I said, all of us in this boat together, healing together. And one thing y'all know, Willie Lynch said, it's gonna take a phenomena to come along and break these niggas. The shit that I'm, I didn't gave y'all to put on them. The, sh the shit that you done got, the, well, we done practiced for hundreds and hundreds of years on this beautiful, beautiful hearted people, spiritual hearted people, loving hearted people. All the abuse that we going to put on them is going to keep them perpetually miserable. Not just for a uh, a hundred days, a hundred damn years, perpetually miserable. They ain't even gonna know how to get along with themselves. And damn it, you can't tell me we're not walking in that day right today. But I'm here to say, family, we gotta wake up. We have to wake up now, and we're gonna have to emotionally mature. Cause if we can't do that, you can't make it to the next level. And ah, God, you may love me, I may love you. I may love my sister next door. I may love my brother down the street. I may love my auntie down the road. But if we don't get emotionally healthy, we ain't going to be able to deal with this demon got ready to keep unleashing on us. No way in hell. No way in hell. And it's a coward that don't want to deal with what they transgressions and whatever they... Um, situation is in a world that's so unhealthy. You should know this world so damn crazy that you can't stand but to keep trying to get healthy in it. So, again, we all in this together. Can't none of us judge the other one. All we can do is look at it and move forward and say how we gonna do it. How we gonna do it. You tell me what y'all think, family. Y'all think I'm out of order, y'all? Are you an emotional reasoner? Is, do you think that that's the way that we can um, go to the next level? Or do you think it doesn't matter? Do you think, first of all, being an emotional reasoner is real? Is that a real concept to you, being an emotional reasoner? Or do you think that is the way you're supposed to reason? If it don't feel good. Uh -uh. No logic in it. No balance. Because what three elements is going to make this universe work, order, balance, and harmony. So ain't no order and ain't no balance in it. So you know it ain't going to be no harmony. Y'all tell me what you think. Because I could be out. You know I'd be tripping. So I'd like to know what y'all think. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. And y'all, please leave your comments below and tell me what you think. Am I tripping?